Today I'll be talking about uh, ventilator induced lung injury. So the topics I will be covering is definition and the pathophysiology of uh, what this whole concept of ventilatory associated lung injury is about. So we'll talk about where did this whole concept of uh, ventilatory associated lung injury or ventilator induced lung injury came about from and uh, what we have understood about it from animal studies. So we we'll just briefly look into there are some 15 studies done in different animals to look at the effects of end inspiratory stress and the strain and there are around 8 studies to look at end expiratory stress and strain studies. So these uh, studies in animals have uh, you know helped us understand and gain insights into the whole concept of uh, WALI. So I will keep using the word WALI. I think that makes uh, this a bit easier and we'll talk about uh, what are the risk factors that we need to be aware which uh, precipitates or which act as a trigger for WALI and we'll talk a little bit about atelectotrauma or cyclic atelectasis and uh, do we have any means by which we can prevent WALI I think that is also something we need to understand clinical features and summary. So basically when you look at pathogenesis of uh, WALI uh, so the whole Pathophysiology lies with the how we uh, titrate this transpulmonary pressure. As we all understand, this transpulmonary pressure is a difference between airway pressure and pleural pressure. So obviously, when uh, the ventilatory strategies are such that where your transpulmonary pressure tends to increase due to various reasons, due to uh, erroneous tweaking of uh, pressure and volume. I think that leads to increase in transpulmonary pressure and that obviously is one of the important reason why WALI gets uh, sets in. And to simplify our understanding of transpulmonary pressure, it is the difference between the tidal volume that is delivered, means delivered means the tidal volume that you have set to be delivered and what is the tidal volume that the lung receives. So the difference between which is what will determine the transpulmonary pressure. So when there is obviously a huge difference between what is delivered and what is received and, uh, and if that leads to increase in the transpulmonary pressure, there are a lot of changes that happen at the alveolar level. So when you look at a patient with WALI, so what they typically have is alveoli is flooded with lot of hemorrhages. So there is lot of hyaline membrane formation and there is lot of edema. So there is basically flooding of these alveoli with hemorrhage iron membrane formation, fluid and there is surfactant loss. So these four remains the important pathognomonic changes in WALI, ventilatory associated lung injury. And all these together because there is, so basically if you...